Hi, I'm Sean Reardon, Mayor of Newburyport, and welcome to the latest edition of the Mayor's Corner. Now we're back in the office this week. It is beautiful out outside. And as you know, I've been kind of doing these every other week in the summer, but starting back up in September, we'll be back to our every week schedule. But this has actually worked out pretty, pretty well. Like I said, this is my third year going through the Mayor's Corners and uh, it's worked out well this summer doing the every other and it gives Ryan a break too and uh, again we have a lot to talk about so uh, we've got a lot to talk about today but first as you've noticed I have someone with me today this is eighth grader Braden Farrell and Braden's family uh, bid on the mayor for the day auction item for the New Report Education Foundation uh, auction that took place last November. Okay, so he was the lucky winner, I guess. <laughs> but first of all, I want to thank the Farrell family for making a donation to the NEF. Thank you, NEF. They do so much for our schools. I mean, they have their hands on so many really unique and interesting projects for our school system. It, it really makes us that much better, uh, right? Because they're doing all these extra really, really fun things and uh, things that aren't happening at other schools. The NEF, again, really a huge supporter. And again, this is a great opportunity. So every year, like they come to me and like we try to think of different things. I've done pizza parties. I've done calling a basketball game with me. And so this mirror, uh, mirror for the day is just one of those, with those things. But I love being involved in the NEF. And so this was, this was really fun today. So Braden's family is a, a old time to report family. I, I knew his dad very well growing up. So it's been great having Braden here today. Has it been fun today so far? Yeah, it has. <laughs> okay, so it's been fun so far. We've done a lot of cool things. We'll talk a little bit about, about that more in a second. But we're coming towards the end of the summer, right? I mean, school is starting very soon, so just an update. School starts after Labor Day this year, although there will be some teachers back in the buildings next week, especially our new hires here in New Report. But first day for teachers is officially uh, September 3rd. Freshman orientation, and my daughter Ruby is going to be a freshman this year, so that's uh, the next day, Wednesday, on uh, September 4th, and then everybody starts school. Uh, actually, maybe not kindergarten, but the rest of the, uh, besides kindergarten, starts school on September 5th, which is a Thursday. Uh, so we're excited. Are you excited? Eighth grade this year. Yeah, I'm excited. Yeah, so he's excited. He's, he's it's going to be fun to get back and see some of my friends. That's right. Get back to see some of the friends you haven't seen all summer. Braden's also coaching uh, middle school football, so the seventh and eighth grade team. Braden's one of the coaches, which is really fantastic. Actually, my son is on that team, so uh, it's great to be back in fall, and everyone get back into their, like, routines, right? You get back into school, you get back in your routines, you know where you're supposed to be, and, you know, there's no more sleeping in. You're getting up, and you're getting your day started, so um, I know I'm excited about that, especially for my kids. Okay, so while we're talking about schools, uh, we had a school committee retreat this week, right? So in the summer, you know, we take uh, the month of July off. And then in August, we usually come back with one meeting, and it's usually a retreat. So that's an opportunity for all the school committee members and the, and the superintendent to come together and, and talk about a, a wide range of topics. But we kind of just get ready for the school year, right? So some of the topics we talked about this year are fundraising, right? We've been talking about that for over a year now. But like we're constantly, I feel like, asking families in Newburyport for funds for something. So we wanted to kind of get a handle on that and make sure we're funding for, fundraising for maybe extra things, but not things that should be funded out of the operating budget, right? Because again, we're, we're trying to re relieve some of the burden on families just to do activities here in town. And, and you know, again, you know, we pay a lot to, for our kids to do many different things. Not just, and this isn't just sports, this is plays and, and, and arts and culture and all those types of things that are related to our schools. So that conversation has continued. We talked about what the budget process might be this year. You know, I think there was a lot of discussion during our budget process this year around funding for our schools. So what's that gonna look like this year? You know, we have teacher negotiations that are gonna be starting soon. So I get to put the uh, representatives on the school committee on those teams that will do that. Uh, so what's that negotiation look like? What's our budget going to look like so we can have that information when we go into these uh, labor contract, teacher contract discussions uh, as they work towards another three-year contract? And then a couple other things we talked about. We talked about school choice and what's that look like here in New Report. We talked a little bit about that at lunch today, how we know kids in other communities that yeah. want to come to New Report because we do have such a, a great school system with wonderful facilities. So how do we get, um, you know, how do we balance that, letting people come in under school choice and filling empty seats how do we balance that and what's that look like at our schools? And then finally, we had a discussion about, and this is kind of a growing group here in New Report, but there's a group of parents that have come together that, that are, uh, and you'll see some signs up 
coming up around town. I know they just got them in. But this is around, yeah, this is about phones in school, right? So there's a lot of, a big movement in some school districts across Massachusetts about whether or not they should have phones in school. And so this group of parents will be advocating that we don't have phones in school. So I was going to ask Braden while he's here, what do you think about that? What have you seen in schools? And like, do you think this is something that, the, that we should be looking at uh, doing in our public schools? I think sometimes phones can be distract, or like all the time, phones can be distracting, but they can be like a tool to help for certain things, or like if you need to like tell, text your parent or something to do like a pickup, change pickup or something. Yep. Um, they can be useful, but they're also a bit of a distraction. Yeah, so I, I think I think this, this group coming together I think is great. I mean, I, I, you know, think about it. This is how our later start times came about, was a group of parents coming together and seeing like a problem that they, they, that they think could could, we could solve and that would help the, the the biggest amount of students, right? The greatest amount of kids in Newport. So now I think this is probably that next thing that's gonna gain a lot of traction because I think we do see how addictive these phones have become, especially for our kids. I know I have three kids with phones and you know I, I see it every day. So you know if we're not using it in school as a tool, you know, it, it, it could just be a distraction. So I think the school committee started that conversation this week and I think we're gonna involve that parent group and have a lot more discussions about it. But this is probably the year that we start trying out some different things around phones and we'll have those public forums and get and, and get uh, parent input as we go. Uh, but this is definitely a discussion the school committee is going to take up this year, right? So that's our schools. We're excited for the school year, and um, you know, again, it will be here before you know that first week in September will be here before you know it. I had two kids trying out for varsity sports this week. Um, you know, my daughter Sadie plays volleyball. She's going to be a junior, and my my uh, daughter Ruby as a freshman and she's, she's trying out for the soccer team. So good luck to both of them and good luck to all of our fall athletes as we get into uh, the Newport High School school year. A couple other things going on in the city that I just wanna update you real quick. So we're still uh, in the process of replacing our police marshal, right? Mark Murray is retiring at the end of this month. He has been here on an interim basis. He retired actually in May as we had gone through this process. So uh, there's gonna be an assessment center and we did this for the fire chief not that long ago, right? So we have an assessment center that's gonna take place, I believe at the senior center this weekend. And we've got four, what I am told, because I haven't been part of this process yet, uh, four dynamic candidates for um, our next police marshal, one of them being an internal candidate. So I'm looking forward to see how they do in that assessment center. They'll get a score and a rank and be like graded on that. And it's a, it's a lot of real, real life activities uh, that, that they'll have to be put through. And then they'll get a ranking and then I'll get that information. And then the final step will be the following week. I will, be, I will have a one-on-one -on -one interview with those four, four candidates. And then I will put forth my, my choice for our next police marshal. But I, I'm hearing really wonderful things about the process. The nine member committee that we put together uh, has been really, uh, you know, excited about the people that uh, they've been able to talk to and, and the applicants that they have. So I, I think we're in really great hands and uh, you know, we'll have a big send off for, for Marshall Murray too as he, as he closes out his, his long career here in New Report. But uh, no, we're excited uh, about this process and I'm excited to, to meet the four candidates in the coming weeks. Okay, there's gonna be a lot of talk about housing this fall and Bra Braden and I have been able to talk about it a little bit today. Uh, we talked about the Brown School a little bit and in that process. So all those plan those three uh, proposals that we received for the Brown School Adaptive Reuse RFP are online right now. So if you go to the planning department, look on the left-hand side, you're gonna see a, 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 a thing for, for Brown School. You can click on that right now and see all these, uh, all three of these proposals. So the next step for us, you know, I put together a little advisory group that we had a meeting about the, the three proposals last week. Now we're gonna bring in each of those three proposals or those applicants in for interviews. And so we have set those up, that's happening next week, and then we'll score those three proposals and then, then we'll decide what happens next. Maybe we you know, submit multiple proposals into city council, maybe we just pick one to put forward and then the city council, they have to decide what happens with that next. Uh, they'll have to make the building surplus and then they'll have to you know, work with uh, you know, whoever that applicant is, all right? So he's giving me the one minute and I've been talking way too much. This happens every time. Mm -hmm. So Brown School is one of those places. Kmart is one of those places that's still looking forward to the housing. Uh, we're still working on a development agreement with the owner of Port Plaza, uh, Kaplan. So that process is still moving forward. We've got a, a, another meeting coming up and I'm gonna involve some city councilors in getting some feedback on what that development agreement looks like before we send it back to the Port Plaza attorney. Uh, so that's moving forward. And you're gonna actually start hearing some stuff about Waterfront West too. You know, we've been going back and forth with New England development the last couple of years. I think we're in a pretty good spot. 
uh, where we are, where we can start thinking about what development agreement and zoning looks like for that area with NED. And so the next couple months, keep you an eye on that. So this is all a lot of different housing things going on. We just had the Secretary of Housing in uh, Livable Communities uh, at Augustus come to Newburyport last week. We had a great tour of some of the housing uh, places in the city and the possibilities. So that's coming up. And so because of all that, we want to get the public even more informed. We're going to have a housing forum on September 11th, again, which is a tough date to do anything, but it was an available date. We're going to really make sure we recognize how important September 11th is before that, for that meeting that night. But we're going to invite the public to come and learn about all these different housing opportunities, whether it be market rate, affordable, and some of these projects that are, are, are possibilities here in the city. <coughs> Excuse me. And then also some of the things that just came out from the, the Homes Act that was just uh, the Affordable Homes Act that was just signed by uh, Governor Healy a couple weeks ago. So what, what are those some of the things that came out of that, that that new report will have to deal with? Things like accessory dwelling units, ADUs. That's a big topic that's going to come up for the City Council this fall, too. So that's coming up on September 11th and more, more information will follow. A couple of quick things. Uh, Plumber Springs Bridge. <coughs> We're moving forward with West Newbury on that. They're gonna, that's going to go up to bid. Uh, so we'll have a better idea what the cost will be and then what the cost split will be between West Newbury and Newburyport. And the last thing, oh, and, and I just real quick, the fire station, Weston Fire Station, still moving along. Looks still like it's going to be like an October date. Looks and, good. and Yep, it looks pretty good. We're really yeah. excited about that. <coughs> Excuse me again. Uh, so that project's moving right along. But the last thing I wanted to talk about Braden with today is, you know, accessibility issues in the city, right? We've got our streets and sidewalks work still happening. And I guess, Braden, from your perspective, and I don't know if you actually can see in here, but Braden actually is in a wheelchair. Uh, but, you know, again, one of the most active kids I've ever seen. I see him all around town. So I thought he'd be the perfect kid to ask, or person to ask, I should say, about, you know, what are we doing well? What could we do better? And we've had a couple of really good conversations about that today. So I guess from your perspective, like how are we doing around accessibility in town and, and where are some places that you think we could do a little bit better? Um, it's pretty good. Um, some of like the sidewalks around Newburyport need a little bit of work. Um, but like we, me and you talked about, like there's that we're working on sidewalks, building new sidewalks, um, some of the streets that are getting repaved. And then, um, like Johnson Street, that's by the Knock. That's they're doing that right now. That'll be exciting to see when school's starting. Yep. Um, yeah. So that's that, that's actually it's been great because I've actually had Braden chime in on a few different things today around that, and we're actually going to finish the day in our projects meeting with the planning and and DPS and get some even more insight into some of these things. But street work is still going. We're trying to finish up Johnson Street. One side of it should be done before the start of school. We're actually putting another sidewalk on the other side of the street there. And then we've got two other streets that we're going to finish up, and then we'll get the final paving done uh, within the next three or four weeks, which is exciting. Uh, and that's it. Uh, that's my Mayor's Corner this week. So again, happy Labor Day, everybody. I'm not going to be here next week, or I'm not going to have a Mayor's Corner next week. I'll be here. I hope you enjoy the rest of the summer. The weather's been great. Braden, thank you for coming in today, and thank you for just being... Yeah. Uh, a great mayor with me today and uh, it's been really exciting and, and nice having you come around and, and yeah. get to meet everybody it's been nice. thank you very much and i will see you all in september on the next mayor's corner Bye.